Hey gang, welcome back to another installment of Design to Move. My name is Ryan Maxwell. Today we're going to be going into your hamstring complex. If you like the information you receive today, make sure to subscribe. Otherwise, down below we have our website posted, fluidfitnessandnutrition.com. And if you have any questions, make sure to post them down below. We oftentimes overuse our hamstring complex and due to which our glutes don't fire. We have a tendency to lean into our hips and rely on the anterior ligaments of our pelvis to create support and stack back on our lumbar spine. In today's segment, we're gonna target your hamstring complex. Oftentimes these muscles are overused and due to which it leads to a posterior tilt in the pelvis. Because the muscles tuck the pelvis under, this puts a lot of pressure into our lower back and it functionally inhibits our lower back muscles and our hip flexors. So that's why we're gonna show you how to use a foam core ball to inhibit your hamstrings, lengthen them, activate your hip flexors, and then put it into an integrative hip hinge movement, then follow it with an isolated strengthening of your gluteals to get more stability around your pelvis. If you like what you're hearing, make sure to subscribe, and if you have any questions, reach out to us down below, or check out our website at fluidfitnessandnutrition.com. The hamstring's primary role is to bend the knee. It also helps in assisting with hip extension. The problem occurs when the hamstring overacts and it takes on the primary role for hip extension, bypassing the activation of the glute. When the hamstring becomes overactive, it contributes to a posterior tilt of the pelvis where it shifts our pelvis under and puts a lot of pressure onto the anterior ligaments of our hips. So today we're going to show you with a foam core ball how to release these muscles so that they're not so overactive. Let's get down on the ground. You're going to brace your leg right on top of the ball so that the hamstrings are actually smushed between the tension of the ball and your femur. Using the weight of your leg, you're going to push the ball down into the fibers of the hamstring. There's three of them. Try not to arch your back as you put the weight down into the ball. You can use your body weight and push down into the ball so you can get more pounds per square inch on that muscle. Try your best to anchor your lower back so that it doesn't roll under as you're pushing in, but don't pull too hard so that you put too much tension into the hamstring. Remember that there's three heads to your hamstring complex, your outer lateral, center, and medials. You can use the ball to target all three. Try to stay on one spot for up to a minute and a half and breathe out to encourage the release in the muscle. For those of you with tight hamstrings, this position may make it difficult for you to get the muscle to release. If that's the case, sit on a bench or a chair and then brace the leg on top of the ball. Once you're done, let's go right into our stretch. So recall that the hamstring attaches the lower portion of your leg, your tibia, all the way up to the tuberosity of your pelvis. So to lengthen it, we're going to want to pull those two segments away from each other. So to get an effective stretch, you're going to want to extend your leg out in front of you. I'm bracing my weight into my heel and I'm going to tip my hips back behind me. Notice that my knee is extended, my foot is flexed up, dorsiflexed, and then I'm going to hinge deep until I feel a little bit of a tug on my hamstring. You're going to feel that either at the hip or down by the knee. You don't want to go so far that you feel pain at all. What helps to get the muscle to release is after you've held it for about 30 seconds, flex the knee by actually flexing the hamstrings, hold it there for about seven seconds, release it for two seconds, and then tip lower and see if you can get more active range of motion without showing up in any distortion in the joints, meaning the foot's not gonna flex down and the hip's not gonna pivot in or out. That release strategy is called a PNF or a neuromuscular stretch. By employing that technique, maybe one to three times, you'll notice that you'll be able to get a greater and greater active range of motion. So you're gonna to wanna to hold that stretch for up to about a minute and a half and do both sides of the body before we go on to our activation. Let's get into it. So now that we've inhibited and lengthened the hamstrings, we're gonna to wanna to activate the opposite muscle that does the opposing action. In this case, it's the hip flexor muscles, the muscles that bring the leg up towards the chest. So we're gonna activate the hip flexors by drawing the leg up in deflection and using your own weight and pressure to create resistance for that leg. We're gonna push the knee into the palm, holding it at 90 degrees for about six seconds, and then release it, and then go through multiple rounds of that activation. 
Traditionally, the hip flexors are normally dominant in the majority of the population and they create an anterior tilt. For those of us that have a posterior tilt, these are muscles that we might want to activate and also stretch at the same time. So remember gang, you're going to want to activate those hip flexors with 10 rounds of 6 second repetitions on both sides and then get into your integration. Let's go right into it. For the next movement, you're going to need a set of dumbbells. I've got fives. Now that we've inhibited our hamstrings and lengthened them, hopefully turning them off, activated our hip flexors, we're going to want to integrate this into a big movement. With the dumbbells in hand, with the palms facing towards your hips, you're going to tuck your chin and then hinge your hips back behind you, in essence stretching through the hamstrings until you feel that first initial line of tug or pull. With that basic hinging position in mind, draw your arms back behind you as you sink your weight into your heels and your hips. So the act of drawing your arms behind you is going to engage your lats and your extensors both of which are going to help to stabilize your spine so that you get an active release out of your hamstring and that also is going to help to upregulate the utilization of your gluteals. As you perform the movement, make sure to keep your chin tucked back and pull your shoulders back the entire time. That's going to help to maintain a centered position over your hips. Learning how to functionally engage your extensors and lats while lengthening your hamstrings is going to go a long way to maintaining proper lumbopelvic hip stability. Try to keep the movement in action for 15 to 20 repetitions and work on the slow opening of the hip as you tip down. So by using this movement, we're teaching the brain to body connection of how to use the right sets of muscles. We wanna learn how to engage the glutes while reducing our reliance on the hamstrings. Using this type of process is gonna go a long way to maintaining a neutral pelvic alignment. What's next is strengthening and isolation the gluteals. Let's get right to it. The primary muscle groups that are responsible for maintaining your lumbopelvic stability are your gluteals. If your body has grown reliant on using your hamstrings for hip extension as opposed to your glutes, they don't like to function. So we're going to want to target them in isolation. To do that, we're going to get on the ground and get into a bridge position. So laying on the ground, you're going to get your body centered so that your knees are broken at 90 with your feet flat on the ground. Position your arms down to your sides of your torso with your chin tucked down. What I like to do is first start off by pressing my arms into the ground to keep my body centered on the mat. The first thing to do is to think about centering or stabilizing your lumbar spine. I do this by creating a slight tuck under in my hips so that I engage my abdominal muscles. From there I'm going to push into my heels and lift my pelvis up so that I can only go so far that my lower back doesn't start to extend excessively. As I push up through the movement, I'm making special note not to let my knees either drive out or in as I come up and down through the hip extension and flexion. So you're going to want to do about 15 to 20 repetitions and really focus on the slow opening or extension of the hip as you let your butt go down to the ground. So learning how to engage your gluteals in an isolated strength position like this is going to go a long way to reduce the tone or the focus that your brain puts into your hamstrings. Make sure that we use the glutes as your primary lumbopelvic hip stabilizer and hip extensor. So this brings us to the end of another segment of Design to Move, this one focusing on the hamstring complex and posterior tilt. As a quick recap, you're going to want to release your hamstrings, lengthen them, activate your hip flexors, go into an integration with a posterior chain activation, and then strengthen the gluteals. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and if you want more information on posterior tilt, check out our website at fluidfitnessandnutrition.com. We have it posted in the description below. Remember, your body's designed to move, so stay in motion, and we'll see you next time for another installment of Design to Move.